In this video, I will give you the intuition about what's the difference between simple regression and multiple regression. Let's start with a simple regression, where we use x to explain y. Beta s is the slope of x. This s means simple regression. And we have the usual error term, epsilon. Let's use the Venn diagram to represent the regression. The green area represents x, and the red area represents y. This orange or brown intersection is the variation of x that explains the variation of y. Bigger this intersection, bigger will be the r square. That means x is more powerful to explain y. Explain here means to predict y. There is nothing to do if it calls y. R square is just a measure of correlation between x and y. Now let's assume that you have another variable that explains y, z. And the slope of z is delta s. And this is a simple regression as well. The variable z is this blue area. And the variation of the z that explains y is given by this pink area. What happens if you run a multiple regression if the variables x and z? Note that you call the slope of x beta m. This m is multiple regression. And the slope of z delta m, that is multiple regression, might be different from the simple regression. See the Venn diagram below. Beta s equal beta m and delta s equal delta m. This is a special case. See that there is no intersection between x and z. If x and z are independent, then the correlation between x and z will be zero. See that the Venn diagram is not a formal definition of independence. This is just a tool to help your intuition. But the most common situation is that x and z are correlated. That means the correlation is different than zero. If x and z is correlated, now x and z has intersection. You can see in the Venn diagram. Look at the black area. That is the intersection between x, y, and z. The multiple regression, you discard this black area. You discard this information. And why? In a multiple regression, the coefficients has a set repairable interpretation. That means this beta m is the impact of x on y, keeping everything else constant. The beta is the directly, the isolated impact of x on y. It does mix with the effect of z. Therefore, in a multiple regression, the black area has to be discarded, because you cannot attribute to x or z, you don't know. One consequence now is that the area of x that explains y it is smaller now. That means x is less powerful to explain y. The consequence is that now the beta of the simple regression will be different from the beta of the multiple regression. And the delta of the simple regression will be different from the delta from the multiple regression. We say that the beta of the simple regression is biased because it's capturing the effects of the z as well. If you control for z, now the coefficient of x, beta m, will be unbiased. What is more likely to be statistically significant? Beta s or beta m? Beta s, because in beta m you discard some information, some variation that explain why. I prefer to have a unbiased beta that is not statistically significant than a biased beta that is statistically significant. This diagram also explains the multicollinearity problem. If x and z is very correlated, this black area increases and the more information is discarded. Then, then both coefficients of x and z will not be statistically significant. 